am Zero the Third, the king of this kingdom! I'm plenty friendly. Hold on a minute! That is the truth! Who am I? How can I forget? Well, how do I keep it what off? What makes you so sure? Hello! Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least... That was how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei, have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? You place a pair of subjects in separate rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Some of them, he found, had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were... kidnapped. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for 18 children total. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. 
the children who were put into Group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in Group A. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life-or-death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink, and your brothers and sisters will drown. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. It was the same with the gigantic in Building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? Get down here already! He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes, I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> her name was Akane. That was the girl who... died. Akane Kurashiki died? Nine years ago? Then... who is Chun? No. No, 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 no. That, 
It's impossible. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do too. It doesn't mean anything. It was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there, alright? <sighs> I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out.
All right. This is the next. Ah, oh, the door. Did that just close on its own? Don't tell me we can't go back. I don't know. Let's see. Damn it. It looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, uh, there's another door over on the right. There's a card reader next... It's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find a key card, we could open the door and leave? Well, yeah, that might work, but... Uh, hey! Wait a minute! Are you saying we're gonna have to search through this room for one little card? Oh, man. <sighs> Looks that way. No way! For real? Well, we can sit down and wait to die, if that's what you prefer. I rather doubt that, however, so it would be wise to start looking. We haven't much time. Let's find that key card. Oh, and the Neptune key as well. We won't be able to get through the hallway without it. <sighs> <sighs> All right then, let's begin.
picture. What the? What the hell is this? This man with a mustache on the right. He's the same guy we found murdered in the captain's quarters. He had the zero bracelet on his left arm. And the second man with the glasses and a doctor's coat. He's the ninth man, the one with bracelet number nine. He died after he went into door five. But this guy... The one in the striped suit? Oh man, that's Ace. Yeah, I guess it is. No doubt about it. But what does it mean? What is Ace doing in this picture? Not only Ace, the ninth man and Cap too. And they look happy, like they knew each other well. Why? How? How in the world are these four men connected? You say Ace is in that picture? Yeah, it doesn't look like it was taken recently though. Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap all look about 10 years younger. Ah, so the Ninth Man and the man you found murdered in the Captain's quarters are also in the picture? Yeah. Is there anyone else? Or are there only three people in the picture? I'm afraid I can't see it. No, there's one more guy. He's got kinda long hair, he looks smart, but a little cold. He's the only one I don't recognize. Hmm. What's the date of the photograph? It doesn't have one. Did you look on the back? Back? Yes, the reverse. The other side. Huh. Praying for the success of the Nonary Project. 
with Nijisaki, Kubota, and Musashido. <sighs> then the four men in this picture were the organizers of the Nonary game nine years ago. That means Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap were all responsible for making it happen. But I feel like I should be more shocked about this. It's almost as if that's just how things were always supposed to be. Why? Why am I not surprised? Ace was the one in charge of the Nonary Project. But why? Why am I so calm? It's like I already knew. Ah, of course. I understand now. Ace was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. He was the one who invented the game nine years ago. He was Gentaro Hongo. Ace is... Hongo? I had my suspicions from the beginning. Their voices were similar. Too similar to be a coincidence. I could never forget his voice. It was the voice of the devil. I couldn't be sure, though. After all, I had no way to check. I certainly couldn't ask him. Even if I had known, however, I would never have told you. Zero made it quite clear what would have happened if I did. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Huh? I didn't know that Ace was Hongo. Oh, yes. I suppose you wouldn't have. Nine years ago, you were in Building Q in Nevada, but Hongo was in the Gigantic with us. I know. That's why I didn't know what Hongo looked like. But why? Why didn't you tell me? I mean, I'm your sister, right? You could have told me. I'm sorry. I apologize for keeping this from you. But if I'd told you, Clover, you would have told everyone else. And if you did, then I would have been forced to tell them about what happened nine years ago. I had to prevent that. Uh. Hey, Junpei. You think I could borrow that picture for a sec? Sure. <sighs> Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Hey, Seven, do you... Shut it! Just... just be quiet. I'm this close to remembering. This close. Hongo Kubota Nijisaki Musashido. Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Nonary Project. <gasps> shit. What? What's wrong? Holy shit, this is nuts. Um, what's nuts? I remember... Remember what? Everything. Everything? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember all of it. My memory's back! I remember what happened before I got snatched! What? Uh. Huh? Let me tell you what happened. Like Snake said, Ace is Hongo from the right. The other three are Musashido, Nijisaki, and Kubota. Musashido was the man with the cash. Nijisaki was Hongo's right-hand man. And Kubota developed the actual technical details of the experiments. How do you know all this? Come on, man, I told you, I finally got my memory back! No, that's not what I mean. I'm trying to ask you why you knew all this stuff in the first place, before you forgot it. You really want to know? Of course. Me too! Hmm. This is gonna take a while. Hell, it'll probably take me a good three days to tell you everything. Well, we don't have three days. Just give us the short version, alright? Short version, huh? Alright, fine. Give it a shot. No promises, though. I'm a detective. It's a little awkward to say this about myself, but you could probably consider me a lone wolf type. I hold my own code, because I think doing what's right is more important than doing what you're told. That's why I followed my gut that night. A slim lead brought me to the wharf. It was nine years ago. And the wharf had been cold as fuck, and I could barely see squat. I was investigating a mess of kidnappings, all of them children. It all had one thing in common. A history of visits to one particular hospital. A hospital under the management of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. My investigation had turned up evidence that Cradle had been involved in the kidnappings. After a little sweet talking, I managed to finally get a real lead from someone inside Cradle. My source told me this. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. So I headed to the wharf. From the shadows, I searched the harbor until I found the ship he was talking about. There was a bunch of movement there. Men in black suits, many of them were carrying large bags. The bags. There was something about the way they moved, there's no doubt about it. There were human beings in those bags. I moved before I realized it. I 
came out of hiding, my gun already in my hand. Don't move. I felt metal touch the back of my head. Drop the gun. I could kill you right now. It'd be easy to get away with it, too. Just tie an anchor to your feet, and no one would find you for a week. Not what you want. The fish here would love a meal. I kept digging the cold metal thing into my skull. <sighs> there was nothing I could do. I did what he said and laid my gun on the ground. Then suddenly, there was a sharp pain in my neck. A needle. A drug. And that was my last thought. My face hit cold concrete. I was out like a light after that. <clears throat> I woke up on a hard floor. Damn it. Shit, my head hurts. I did a quick once over of the room. Where am I? A small, shabby bed, a dirty sink, a toilet with no privacy. I'd seen it countless times as a cop. I'm in a cell, huh? Facing the toilet was a door set into the wall. I was still pretty woozy, but I made my way over to it. I pushed and pulled on it, but. <clears throat> it won't open. Not like I expected much else. Would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. I gave up and made my way back to the bed and sat down. Hmm. I sat there for a very, very long time. Then, I heard a faint voice. The voice was far away. I couldn't understand what it was saying. But I could hear one. It was pretty high. Probably a little kid. Huh? No, it was several. I hear five. Or six, maybe more. Where? Where are they coming from? I pressed my ear to the wall and tried to listen through it. No, that's not it. Left. It's coming from under the bed? I hauled on the metal frame and flipped the thing over. And there it was. The bed had hidden an air vent under it. The hole in the wall was covered by a metal grate. I dropped flat on the floor and peered through the grate. I couldn't see shit. I knew it in my gut. Hold up. Why are there kids here? But then what my inside man told me popped into my head. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I on that ship? <sighs> it didn't matter. All I knew was I had to get to those kids. I checked out the metal grate. Fit. I stuck my fingers in and grabbed it. Then... <sighs> yeah! How do you like that, you son of a bitch? I finally got the damn thing off. Sweat was dripping down my face. The first bit or so was tight. I had a wriggle on my belly. It wind up eventually, and there was space for me to crawl along on my hands and knees. I went from crawling like a worm in dirt to skittering like a bug. Couldn't say it was much better, but I'd take what I could get. And when I'd been in the thing long enough to start wondering where it'd take me... A massive sound nearly scared the piss out of me. It was like a heavy metal door had just been slammed shut. Then, there was a voice. What? I wasn't 
sure what it meant, but anything with incinerator is bad news. Then, almost as if that was a cue, I heard a mess of young sounding voices. A bunch of them were straight up screaming in terror. And all the sounds together made a howl that made the hair on my neck stand straight up. Damn it! What the hell is going on here? I scrambled through the duct as fast as I could. I made a giant racket, but I didn't care at that point. soon found a metal door on the left side of the duct. The kids were screaming on the other side. I found it. I yanked the handle and threw the door open. I almost ripped the metal off its hinges. What the... What the hell is this place? I couldn't believe what I saw. The room had a dome up top. There had to be about nine walls, all the same size. The ceiling was an upside-down funnel. Almost like a chimney. I looked down. There they were kids I'd been searching for. They all gawked up at me, suddenly silent, for the moment, from surprise and fear. Scared of the room or me, I couldn't tell. Probably both, actually. <laughs> Not like I can blame them running into a mug like this when they're already scared shitless. I snorted at my own digging myself and turned to the kids. Don't worry, kids, I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. All of them stood there, frozen. Well, except one. He was a boy, slightly older than the others, in a private school uniform. Who the hell are you? He stepped forward and glared at me suspiciously. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. It looked like they relaxed some the second I got the words out. How are you going to help us? Where's the exit? There isn't one. The doors we came in through won't open, and the door over there... He kind of cut himself off. I think he was considering something before he changed his mind. Anyway, there's no point. We can't all get out of here. If we don't get out of here, we're going to be burned to death. Burned to death? Can't you hear it? That voice said the incinerator's gonna start up soon! So... So... The voice spoke again. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. They only had 15 minutes. I looked back down at the kids. Looks like a good 20 or 30 feet to the floor. No way I could pull them up. Too big of a distance for any of us to reach. What the hell was I gonna do? But then I got an idea. Wait right there. I'm going to be right back. What? Where, where is he going? Are, are you just going to leave us here? They just got frightened again. I'm not the best at that kind of thing, but I tried to reassure them with a smile. Don't worry, all right? I'll be back. I promise. So just stay calm and wait right there. Got it? I didn't wait to hear them respond. It wasn't time. Well, as fast as a guy could on his hands and knees. Didn't take me long to get back to my cell. Still no way out of there, but I had a plan. I think when I got it, I dove back into the hole and took off towards the incinerator. Then... Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I tipped out the doorway and dropped down the rope I brought with me. Back in the cell, I torn the bed sheets into strips and tied them together to make a rope. It was sloppy, but it got the job done. Alright, just tie that around yourself, okay? I'll pull you up one at a time. Right. Huh. Wait a sec. Something was off. There were more of you before. Where'd the rest of you go? The boy in the uniform answered. I let them go on ahead. We opened the number nine door and they left. What? You're telling me you opened that door? That's what I said. Then what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't go with them. Why not? Look, the only people who can go through the number door... He was in the middle of explaining. <laughs> The wall shook a bit and the voice bouncing around. Look, that can wait, all right? Just get us out of here! <clears throat> right! Grabbed onto the rope. The first one I pulled on was a girl with a ponytail. Next was a girl with a red necktie. A boy in a jacket came after. He said he'd climb up on his own. The boy in the uniform was the last up. Like the other kid, he climbed up the rope himself. He looked pretty scrawny, but I guess he was stronger than he looked. He moved fast. But when it was almost to me, we heard some knocking. Everyone looked at the door. It had a thick, square window set into it. On the other side, an angry face was staring in. God damn it! What's going on here? Why is the room empty? Where the hell are those fucking kids? The 
door open, and a man stepped in looking half mad with fury. I recognized his face. I saw him many times in photos during my investigation. The man's name was Gintaru Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo saw the boy hanging from the rope. Yeah! It was like he was an animal. He lunged for the rope. Hurry! I know! The boy in uniform booked it up the rope. You son of a bitch! Get back here, you little shit! Fifteen feet. Ten. The second I could reach the kid, I grabbed him. I hauled him up and tossed him into the duck behind me. No! No! Hongo had lost it. His face didn't even look human. It was like the bastard pulled off his fake face. He was really a terrifying devil or some kind of damn monster. I quickly reeled in the rope, leaving a furious Hongo yelling at me from the floor. You fucking bastard! You won't get away with this! How dare you compromise this experiment! Experiment? What experiment? Incineration will begin in one minute. Hey! Old man! What the hell are you doing? Hurry up! The boy in the uniform was trying to get my attention. I may have thrown a salute in the raging asshole's face before I closed the door behind me. I was going back in the cell, so we went down the other direction instead. After about 30 feet, we came across another duct on the left. This one was heading down. Everybody nodded and took turns sliding down it. The duct emptied us out into a narrow hallway. There was a door on either side. The one on the left was a normal double door. But the one on the right was familiar. It had black and yellow stripes and a device next to it on the wall. The plate on it read, Incinerator. Incinerator? Yeah, that's where we were. It was the girl with the red tie who answered me. We were inside an incinerator? Yeah. Fungo might still be there. It looks like it's been shut off, though. Wait, what? If he's still in there... Yeah. That's not good. <sighs> that meant we better. We gotta get out of here. Go to the other door. Hurry! The kids started running, and I was close on their heels. On the other side of the door was a large spiral staircase. Run! Didn't mean to tell them twice. Up and up and up. Feet pounded the steps. Our arms were coming fast. Round, round, round. The devil was on the tail. <laughs> the stairway kept going. We passed a couple of landings when the boy in the uniform suddenly spoke. <sighs> Something's up. Akane's not catching up to us. Akane? My kid sister. The girl with the red necktie. Akane. Strange. I didn't remember seeing that in the list of missing kids. Hey! Akane! He kept his hands around his mouth and yelled. <laughs> Maybe we outran her. Boy in the uniform skidded to a stop. I stopped too. So did the other two kids. When did we do that? Well, we passed a couple big rooms on the way here. Maybe she took a rest in one of them? No, that's impossible. Sorry, Grandpa. You keep going. I gotta go look for her downstairs. I turned to go. Hey, kid, wait! God damn it, I said wait! I don't think the kid even heard me. Fuck! I spun around to the boy in the jacket and the girl with the pony. I'm going after her. You two keep going, all right? You got it? The girl nodded and ran up the stairs. But the boy... I'm going with you! <sighs> I didn't have time to argue. I just nodded and ran all the way to the bottom floor, calling for her. Con God damn it! Where the hell did she go? I could tell the kid was frustrated. And then suddenly... Help me! Somebody help me! We heard a girl's voice. Akane! The boy in the uniform threw open the door and leapt into the hallway by the incinerator. We rushed in after him. I couldn't for the life of me believe what we were seeing. That bastard Hongo had Akane by the arm. He was forcing her into the incinerator. Come on, goddammit, move! No, I don't want to! Let me go, please! Let go of me! She planted her feet squarely on the floor and was struggling to get away. But Hongo was bigger and stronger. She wasn't gonna win. <clears throat> Akane! Her brother roared with anger and charged toward Hongo. You're too late, idiot! Hongo lifted Akane bodily into the air and threw her, still fighting him, into the incinerator. Ah! Before we could even blink, 
Ungo had leapt through the door after her. We saw him land inside. And then, the door slammed shut. We ran to the door. We did everything we could think of to get the thing open. But... Ah! Fuck! It's no use! The goddamn thing won't move an inch! He started slamming his fists against the door. He was close to shattering his knuckles with how hard he pounded on it. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? You came back! The voice was muffled. But all of us could hear the sheer terror in it. What did I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door. W what? Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place if please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same damn thing. Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Just hang on, all right? We're gonna figure out a way to save you! His words would have seemed like a sick joke to her if she'd been able to see how white and bloodless his face was right then. Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. Figure something out, I promise! I promise, okay? You hear me? I promise! It was torture listening to her sobbing on the other side of the door. Her brother was nearly crying himself. He could only stand there. Fists clenched so tight his knuckles were white. <sighs> uh, what happened then? Come on, man. Put yourself in my shoes. It doesn't end good. You think I want to remember that? Then... Yeah. Shit. If I'd known it was gonna be like this... I almost wish I hadn't remembered. Hey, um... Are you... Are you sure? Huh? Look, I don't want to ask this either, but there's... There's something I don't get. Hmm. So if you could just... Tell me, did that girl, Akane, really... Yeah, I'm sure. There wasn't anything we could do. After a while, the countdown ended, and we heard something burning. We... The fire stopped, but we still didn't move. Me and the jacket kid were frozen. The boy in the uniform collapsed as if he couldn't hold himself up anymore. A few minutes passed. The door opened. The boy in the uniform tripped over his own feet running in. We followed, too numb to speak. The air in the incinerator was hot. Every breath made my lungs feel like they were on fire. It was like standing on hot asphalt. The air was wavering, and, and in the middle of the room, there it lay. The kid's legs were shaking so bad, I don't know how he managed to walk. I couldn't see his face, but his body somehow looked empty. Finally, he reached it. He fell to his knees as his legs gave out on him, and then... Um, um, uh, can I ask you one more thing? What's that? The girl, Akane. What was her last name? What does it matter to you? Just, just tell me, okay? Please? Kurashiki. Her name was Akane Kurashiki. <laughs> you were there that day, weren't you? The tall kid in the jacket. That was you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You are correct, Detective. Don't misunderstand me. I told you before how Zero threatened me. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't say anything about what happened nine years ago. So you're saying you're not working for Zero, right? Of course not. Clover, what about you? Hey, come on! You really think I'm working with Zero? I told you before, you idiot! I was in Nevada, in Building Q. I did hear that a detective rescued the kids on the boat, but I didn't know it was you. 
Well, I guess I believe you. All right, let me ask you another question. Santa's real name is Aoi Kurashiki. He's Akane's brother. You know that? No! No, I didn't, did you? Well, yes. I know Aoi Kurashiki was her brother. But I didn't know he was Santa. At least not from the beginning. Nine years ago, he was in the middle of puberty. His voice is entirely different now. I'm ashamed to say that even my exceptional hearing wasn't able to make that connection. As such, I had no reason to think Santa was Aoi. When did you figure it out? Clover told me that Santa might have been one of the subjects of the initial experiment. It was only a short while ago, while we were leaving the library. When she told me that, I had a... feeling. Santa is Aoi? Akane Kurashiki, June's brother? There's still a lot we don't know. I mean, like, a lot, a lot. But there is one thing I think we can say we know. What's that? The body we found in the shower room. It had to be Nijisaki, dressed up to look like Snake. What? Come on, man, what kind of detective are you? You didn't figure that out already? Hey, go easy on me, man. I just got my memory back, all right? Got me some slack. Hmm. Well, if he is, the three murders make sense then, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Murder. Kubota blew himself up, but that was murder too. So why did these murders take place? If Junpei is correct, and the body in the shower room was Nijisaki's, that means all of the people who were murdered were involved with the creation of the Nonary Project. Kubota, the person who conducted the actual experiments. Nijisaki, Hongo's assistant. Musashido, the man who financed the project. You mean this was all just revenge? Santa is zero. He's getting revenge for the death of his sister. That's why he killed them. No, I, I don't think Santa actually murdered anyone. If I'm right, then it's not hard to figure out who the next victim's gonna be, is it? I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you. Yes. Yep. Right. The next target will be Gintaro Hongo. The person who planned the Nonary Project. In other words, Ace. What? Whoa, what the hell's going on here? It must be 6 a.m. Our time is up. Shit! Come on, we need to get out of here. How? I'm betting this sucker opens the exit. Come on, let's go. I think the shaking stopped. It would seem so, but we are yet to be out of danger. You're right. Let's hurry. This exit needs the Uranus card, too. Hey, Junpei! Yeah, I know. All right, it's open. Let's go! Okay, Neptune Key, let's see if you work. Yes! Oh, I think it unlocked! It says incinerator. So this is the incinerator. This is the first time I've seen it from this side, but yeah. I think so. Then there ought to be a lever near the door. Yeah, right here. Pull that and the door should open. Got it. Let's go! What the hell is going on? What's wrong? Are you okay? 
Jumpy. You came to get me. Of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. Are you sure? Yes. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. Santa. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hiding somewhere? I don't have it. I got sucker punched and they took the gun. What? Who took it? What? Isn't that obvious? I took the gun. Ace. Just what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? Or maybe I ought to say Gintaru Hongo, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. You have me at a disadvantage, and I don't like that. You know me, but I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand my pain? The pain of prosopagnosia, right? Another irritating insect. And how do you know that, hmm? Good question. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no difference to me. This is a waste of time, anyway. It's time for me to go. First is one. Give me your hand. Ah. Eight. And with this... Nine. The Ninth Man. Kubota's Bracelet. I believe I've won this game. I've had quite a time playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait, what? Ace doesn't know who Zero is. Uh, uh, what the hell are you planning, Santa? At any rate, this game ends now. I will escape, and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I suggest you enjoy your final moments. Goodbye. Wait! What? Why isn't it opening? One more time. <laughs> now open! No! What is this? Why? The digital root should be nine! It has to be nine! Then why? Why isn't it opening?
Now! No! Oh. Oh. That was close. Too close. Thank you, Seven. Don't mention it. Just one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. After what he did nine years ago, I oughta rip him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. Nine years ago? Uh, then you must be... Yeah, you finally figured it out, dumbass. Oh. <sighs> Ace, you killed Kubota, Nijisaki, and Musashido, didn't you? Wait, Nijisaki? Oh, right. You don't know yet. All right. We'll just go through them in order then. Let's start off with Kubota. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into door 5 alone. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. One. In the Nonary game, the number 9 is dangerous. Whoever had the 9 bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. Adding 9 to any number doesn't change the digital root which means that number nine could do whatever they wanted. You wanted to remove that threat as soon as possible. Two, you wanted the number nine bracelet for yourself so that you could make use of its power. In fact, you did use it in the murder of Nijisaki. Three, even if his number hadn't been nine, Kubota was a problem. He knew your past. He knew what had happened nine years before. You needed to silence him before he told anyone. Four, but last, and perhaps the most disturbing, you used Kubota as a test. You wanted to know how serious this nonary game was. Was it truly life or death or simply a harmless prank? You convinced him to break the rules so you could see what would happen. That was why you killed Kubota. But he was only the first. Next was Nijisaki. While everyone was off looking for the missing parts for the Reds, you ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prosopagnosia, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki. Chiefly because, when you met him, he was dressed like Snake. That was why you thought Nijisaki was Snake. No, that that's not... That was Nijisaki? Why? How did... I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was Snake. Snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid. But his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me. But if that's true, why isn't he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me? Whatever the reason, anyone who knows my past is a threat. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. You just waved it over the red. Verified your own number and then grabbed Nijisaki's arm and forced it over the scanner panel. Then, when the door opened, you kicked him in. Nine seconds later, the door closed. And then 81 seconds passed. And poor Nijisaki was dead. You mean to say, Snake is still alive? Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm as good as new. <laughs> Thank you for killing the wrong man. But I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. Although, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't blame you. Last but not least, let's talk about Musashido's death. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. You had been in charge of the Nonary Project. Of course you would have known the solution to every puzzle. 
which would mean that you also knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All you had to do was place the watch in the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, you could enter the captain's quarters. Musashido was there. Conveniently placed next to him was an axe that practically begged you to kill him with it. You picked up that axe and buried the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took. And then you returned to the chart room as if nothing had happened. There was, there was something, something I wanted, I wanted to, speak to speak with you about, Junpei. Could, Could you come, come with me for a moment? I had no reason to say no, so I followed you to the wheelhouse. When we stepped inside, remember how you slipped your hand into my vest? You pulled out a piece of paper, the one I used to cheat during the vote. But that wasn't really what you were after. Your true purpose had been to slip the watch into my pocket. It wasn't a very good plan. Had way too many holes, and someone saying the wrong thing could have brought it all down around you. You must have been desperate. But what made you willing to risk it all to do it? Ace. Musashido's murder is the only one I don't understand. You obviously did it. But why? Because of this. What's with the paper? Just... read it. Huh. Let's see. Number one. There are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of nine years past. I have prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you have confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Perhaps he will confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. Zero. Hmm. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. Hmm. That was why I chose door one when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. You meant to kill him from the beginning then? <laughs> uh, Musashido, I mean. I only knew Musashido was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. But yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. Ace, you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes was little more than a puppet, in many ways. Everywhere I went, everything was already prepared. The Reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Nijisaki was dressed like Snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. <sighs> Nijisaki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. But yes, yes, this was a trap. It was Zero's trap, and I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Yeah, by manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. Am I right, Santa? Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I don't know any- Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Actually, I guess I should call you Aoi Kurashiki, huh? My memory came back to me, kid. You're Aoi Kurashiki. No doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. <sighs> but hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? After all, the person who planned the notary game this time around was Zero. And Zero's you. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? Yeah, you got me. I'm Aoi Kurishiki.
I was one of the kids in the nonary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing... No, I, I guess there's two things you got wrong. Number one? I ain't zero. What? Wait, what? Sure, I was helping Zero out, but I'm really more of an assistant, like a secretary. But an assistant's only an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? Calm down there, Junpei. <laughs> didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Junpei, you just said... All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. There's another reason you guys were playing the nonary game. <sighs> to save someone. Save someone? Right. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. What the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. I was there. I saw... Uh... Where's... Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? Ugh! Oh! My head! Oh, my head... It... Feels like it's gonna pop! Seven! What the hell is going on? I don't know. I don't know, I just... Oh! I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode! What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. <sighs> there were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones on the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into the morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. <sighs> the transmitters were put in Building Q, and the receivers were put on the gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but, but there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in Building Q. However, for some reason, she was placed on the gigantic with the receivers, like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in Group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the gigantic. <sighs> I think I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Honga? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's...
Santa! Freeze. Get up. Hey, what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. Damn. Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. Oh, you mean we're trapped? So it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No. No, you can't be serious. Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that! Huh. Huh. What? And there's no other way? It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! Without. Uh. If you're not. Look, it'd be bad, alright? Bad? Uh. Yeah. I, if there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Uh huh. Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You didn't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Uh, you're all idiots. That being said, however... However, I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway. Even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but... I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier, at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! no. What, what is, is this? this? Why? why? The, the digital, digital route should be nine! nine. It, has it has to be nine! nine. Then why? Why, why isn't, isn't it opening? opening? Just to see. Why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. You 
were right. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Come on, over here!
you come over here for a moment? I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right now, she is over in Building Q and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult, but my sister means a great deal to me. And I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in Building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. Now don't ever forget, so long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand?
That didn't sound good. I think it means this room is gonna burn. Burn! The plaque on the door says incinerator, and that voice said that the incineration is about to start. And incinerate means to burn. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. Ah, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I said... Come with me. No! Stop! Let go of me! Let go! Stop struggling, goddammit! Do as I tell you! Too late.
Are you okay? Help me! What should I do? I I think I'm trapped in here. Where did Plum go? He went out the other door. W what? Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been. Incineration will begin in. Evacuate the incinerator immediately. I knew it! Uh, it's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years! What the hell? What the hell? What in God's name are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments. You aren't making any sense. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Incineration will begin in... 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn! Uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well, god damn it! Okay, okay, fine! I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out! What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing! How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. What the hell is that? <gasps> what is that? Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? <laughs> what is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? 
Yeah. Well, we can help, right? Incineration will begin in 13 minutes. Hey, what are you doing? Ah, oh, don't know what to do. It's simple, really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> <laughs> You're a terrible person! I hate you! Oh my! How could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see? I've even left you a way out. A way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man. Oh. If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red? Ah, so you do remember. Right now there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? You really aren't one for listening, are you? I've already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? Why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. <laughs> now start the experiment. Solve the puzzle. Of course you don't! Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution! I can't! Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> it's gonna be quite hot in there in a few minutes. I imagine it will be very painful. <laughs> I can't! I just can't! There's no... Th there's no way! I can't figure this out!
Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy! There's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane.
know. Just hang on, all right? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, all right? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. Trust me, okay? <sighs> Just think of what I did all those times before. I'm gonna do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm gonna solve this problem.
Yes, that's it. Akane, did you get it? Yes, I did. I sold it. I mean, really, you sold it for me, but I copied everything you did. Now I just have to press enter. Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it! Okay, I will. Emergency shutdown. Akane! Sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course! That's fine! Now. Junpei... Are you... Okay? Ah, shut it. Incineration will begin in 90 seconds. <coughs> it doesn't sound like it's stopping. <sighs> what the shit? Why isn't it stopping? It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that... Get to the door! Run! Quick! Verify your numbers on the red! 
Verify? Who? What combination? All of us! We all need to verify! Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! Closes. Go, go, go! Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Akane? Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Ask you something? What's up? That door. The one with the nine on it. Why'd it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight is twenty-six. That makes our digital root eight. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base 2? 0 and 1. How about base 10? That goes from 0 to 9, right? And how about base 16? 0 through F. After 9, it starts at A and goes from there. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? 
What if you go way past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So, I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and what comes after that? Uh, oh, Q. 26. And what does that mean? That wasn't a nine on the door. It was a Q. A fucking lowercase Q! Say that it was a 9 in base 10, but a Q in base 27. All right, I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yes, we're finally here! Please do! Way. What? It can't be. This is... This is the building in the Nevada desert. Experiment building. Oh my god. This whole time we were in building Q.
Kane. Jumpy. Oh, come on. Uh, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. How does it look then? Um, well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and... Growing and growing. <laughs> what does that even mean? Oh, ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. But I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. Watch those bumps, all right? This car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. Hey, shut it. I can't help if I'm big, all right? Suck it up. Why don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. 
There's no way I'm giving this scene up. Juner and should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. Then we've got to hurry if we want to catch them, don't we? Sure thing! Yeah, I, I guess I could have. Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty. Yeah, that too, but I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh, you mean the bunnies. Yeah, the bunnies. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. And then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbits. I couldn't forgive them for that, so I... Hey, uh, there's still some stuff I don't get. Like Ace. Well, I guess I should say Guitaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? Why did you ask him yourself? He's still in the trunk, I assume? Listening to us? Come on, I know you were. Answer me. I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought. I thought if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set. And perhaps I could see faces by peering into people's minds. You could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? Yes. If you want to put it simply, but if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness... You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. To 
this is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well, see, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own. Whether I catch him when he finally slipped up, and during the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Bourdain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? What? <laughs> Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it. But the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Madrigal, of the family Solanaceae. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. I used that extract to create soapery. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm. We grew rapidly. Here, uh, this is for you. What's this? This is, a uh, for you, doll. Uh, his name is Junpei. Chumpy? Are you sure it's, uh, for you, doll? Huh? Uh, yeah, the, the lady at the shop said so, so th that means it's for you, right? I, um, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? Wait, what? That That's, oh man, oh man. <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll, I mean... You do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Yeah, I, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea then. Why are you giving me this anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, y you know how after June, um, we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean, we're gonna be in different schools, and... I just thought I'd, uh, you know, um... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? Okay. So, uh, I wanted to give you this. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. <laughs> uh, yes. I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I give this. It me. So we always... together. Oh, Jumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Oh, Jumpy. I'll never forget you, I promise. I'll never forget you, either.
over there. There's somebody next to the road. Huh? What? Hmm? Thank <laughs> you. 